A portion of this video is sponsored by Doba. More on that later. Indy, go downstairs, go. Your chewing is loud. Disrespectful. We're living in a time where most cameras that come out nowadays are more than capable of creating great images as long as you know what you're doing. Yeah, that's what I thought, dude. And it kind of makes reviewing cameras get a little bit boring. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit and review something that actually looks fun to shoot with. This lens that we're filming with right now, the Sirui Saturn 35 millimeter carbon fiber anamorphic lens. So when I reached out to Cyril for a copy of this lens, they gladly obliged and I am forever thankful. Thank you. I have no freaking idea how they were able to make a full frame anamorphic lens somehow smaller than my iPhone. Usually I'm not a fan of small lenses because of the micro jitters that come with shooting with small lightweight lenses, but this one is nice and dense at 409 grams. I paired this lens with my beloved Sony a7S III, which doesn't get firmware updates like the FX3. Hey Sony, peeved off at ya. That's a rant for a different day, but I paired this lens with a caged up a7S III with a nice little top handle and the Atomos Ninja 5, and it's a nice amount of weight. It's nothing too crazy, but it balances out enough where there's not those micro jitters. Even when your stabilization's turned off and you're filming handheld, it's a nice, beautiful weight for handheld footage. In the past, I worked on some projects where I was hand holding the Red Dragon 6K with Atlas anamorphics on the front. I love how the final results looked, but I definitely had to have an easy rig to support that amount of weight. Otherwise, my wrists would look like cankles, dude. They would just be like normal sized arm here and then just massive wrist here and then normal hand. So I know my wife would probably be super into that kind of stuff, but for me, I just couldn't risk it. My wife loves fat wrists, dude. Okay, anyway, back to the review. Sorry. My point is having a really heavy rig like that will fatigue you way faster on set. Whereas if you have a smaller cinema camera and these lightweight anamorphics, you're gonna be sitting pretty good for a long amount of time. Another thing I noticed while filming with this lens is it's very easy to change your aperture while filming. So basically, if you want it to be wide open, you have to set it to T2.9 and then just like keep your hand off the aperture ring at any cost. Otherwise, you're gonna be changing exposure while getting your shot. They could definitely fix this issue by adding an aperture lock to the lens. My Sigma 24 to 70 has that, and it's really convenient if you just wanna keep the lens in one place or keep it solid while you're traveling. It's not normal for anamorphic lenses to have a locking mechanism like that because they're geared out to have follow focus and aperture control systems wirelessly. That's why you have the gears on there. But isn't the point of these lenses to not be normal? They're affordable, small anamorphics. So why couldn't we have features that support solo shooters like you and me, like a little aperture lock? I think it would be a cool addition, but for now I will just use a little bit of gaff tape. Other than that, the build of this lens is phenomenal. It's housed in solid metal. It feels nice in the hand. It looks like it's professional. And just the tip is covered in carbon fiber. And it looks cool. Plus, it also gives you a little extra grip if you're pulling focus manually, handheld. You know what I'm saying? So you need a little bit of extra grip once your hands are getting greasy on set. And this lens is going to provide that. The minimum focus distance on this lens isn't great. You have to be relatively far away from the subject, which I don't know if you guys have heard of a DP by the name of Chive. His Instagram is unbelievable, but he is a huge fan of wide angle portraits, getting really close to the subject and it creates this incredible wide background that just falls away behind them, but it makes you feel really close to the subject. I really freaking wish you could do that with this lens because if you could get really close to a subject and just see that beautiful anamorphic wide scape behind them, it would be amazing. But you really can't get that close because of the minimum focus. Let's talk about the character of this lens. Yeah, that sounds really professional, doesn't it? There are a few things that separate the visual character of anamorphic 
from your traditional spherical lenses that most of us shoot on. Spherical lenses give you an image that will typically fill up your normal TV, which is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Anamorphics, on the other hand, come in a wide variety of flavors. The two most normal ones are a 2.0 squeeze or a 1.33 squeeze, and that gives you a variety of black bar flavors. The Saturn is a little bit different. It has a 1.6X squeeze, so you still get that black bar effect, it's just in between the 1.3 and the 2. So this is what the image looks like straight out of camera, no de-squeeze applied. And once you correct the footage, you realize a 35 millimeter shot on an anamorphic lens looks a little bit different than a 35 millimeter shot on a spherical lens. With anamorphic, you get way more information on the right and the left side, plus some extra visual goodies. The Saturn is available in two different styles of flare, blue and neutral. I went for the neutral flares because what I saw from the blue ones kind of looked overwhelming and a little bit corny and I just wanted to play it safe and get the neutral and I'm happy that I did. But I will say, I wish this lens had a little bit more of that vintage character. Something like my Helios 44-2, where the lenses are kind of uncontrollable and based on where you're pointing the lens, you might see an artifact or a lens flare in the lens that you weren't expecting. And it just adds to that like beautiful visual character that I associate with anamorphic and vintage lenses. The Saturn is a very clean look. It definitely looks anamorphic and it has a really cool feel to it, um, but I just wanted to point that out. It's, it's definitely not a vintage look, but it does look really cool. And if you're into that normal neutral flare that will sometimes pop up if you're pointing the lens at a light source, I think you're gonna like this. Thank you to Doba for sponsoring today's video because I can pay my bills and eat dinner with my wife. Groceries! Doba is one of the OG drop shipping services based in the United States. Their products have a great profit margin and their platform solves the difficulties for entrepreneurs who don't want to hoard, pre-fund, or ship products. They have over 720,000 products available. One of them that they sent me to test is their auto face tracking tripod for smartphones. So all we're gonna do is set this baby down. I'm gonna set my microphone down, okay? Technology phone, I put my phone in there, just like so. Hold this button down to turn it on and start recording on my phone. Now the tripod should track by itself if I turn. Ooh, it's tracking me. One thing I've learned while making YouTube videos is it's incredibly frustrating to film everything by yourself. Well, now you got a little buddy to help you out. Yay, I finally have a friend that will film for me. He's a camera operator and he's doing a pretty dang good job. Are you my dad? If you're looking to start a business and open an e-commerce store, Doba makes it hassle-free and affordable. They have products in home, garden, sports, beauty, electronics, and more. If you wanna check them out, you get $3 off when you spend $5 or more, or you get $7 off when you spend $20 or more. Check out the links in the description, support them to support my channel. Thank you so much. If I'm being honest, it's been a minute since I've gotten excited and giddy to just go outside and film stuff for the joy of it. I don't know if you guys feel like this with your work and your creative stuff, but for me lately, it's just turned into an absolute grind that I've had to constantly try to catch up with and just a means to make money, survive, <laughs> put food on the table type of thing. And it can be very exhausting and kind of kill your creativity. But this little lens right here, the Saturn, has forced me to slow down a little bit. It's anamorphic, it's all manual, it produces really pretty images, and you have to spend your time setting up the shot and thinking about it intentionally. And that's what I love about this lens, is it forced me to slow down and kind of reignited that passion to just go out, set up a nice looking shot, hit record and enjoy that. When I first started with photo and video, the whole reason that made it fun for me was I grabbed a camera and I grabbed a friend and we went outside together and just took photos of each other, of our location, and we waited for the beautiful light just to get the best shots possible to throw up on Instagram. And I miss those days. And I feel like this lens leans into that idea of just, enjoying shooting. I had a good time with this lens and I do recommend it. I think it's like $1,200, something like that, which is insane for an anamorphic full frame lens. I'm gonna keep it around and use it for some projects in the future. Maybe you'll want to as well. There's gonna be links in the description if you wanna check it out for yourself. If not, either way, I appreciate you being here. Like the video, subscribe, join the Discord, become a channel member if you want. 
But most importantly, watch out for deer because it's, it's hunting season and you need to be safe. So text me when you get home so I know you're safe and I'll see you in the next video because I'm on my grind, baby. I'm putting out content and it's going to be sick, okay? So stick around for that cool stuff. Bye.